Now our David Pogue with news that's truly out of this world. Little asteroids strike the Earth's atmosphere every single day. It's the big ones we worry about. I've never been able to sit still watching any of the asteroid movies and not just want to get up <laughs> and walk away. MIT professor Richard Binzel wrote the book on asteroids. He also invented the Torino scale, a 10-point danger scale for asteroids. All the objects we know of today re reside at zero or one, which simply means they're so small that they don't matter or that we know for sure there's no impact possibility. So it sounds like asteroids wiping out humanity should not be at the top of our list of worries. Asteroids wiping out humanity does not keep me awake at night unless I'm at the telescope studying them. <laughs> but there have been dangerous asteroid strikes. In 2013, a 60-foot rock from space injured 1,500 people and damaged thousands of buildings in Russia. NASA thinks it's time to prepare for the next one, but probably not like this. That's probably not the best way of doing it, because if you blow up an asteroid, you create a large number of chunks, and those chunks will still be going in the same direction. The easiest thing to do is to actually just change its direction slightly, and then it will miss Earth entirely. NASA's Elena Adams is the lead engineer on the DART mission, a joint venture of NASA and the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. It took off last November on a mission to change an asteroid's path by crashing into it. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test because its target is in fact a double asteroid that orbits the sun. The main asteroid, called Didymos, is about half a mile across. It has a moonlet of its own. And that's our target. The goal is to bump the moon's orbit slightly closer to Didymos. We're just, yeah, just a little, little nudge, just a little nudge, a, a tap. You know, it's basically like throwing a tennis ball at a 747. If it goes fast enough, you're going to move it. It's a first test of can we actually do it? As a bonus, the 1,200-pound spacecraft is also a veritable science fair of technology prototypes that could be useful on future missions. Super lightweight solar panels that unroll a new ion thruster, and a separate little camera satellite that DART carried in its pocket so that we can all enjoy pictures of the crash. There's even a new self-driving computer, which takes over when DART is too far away to control from the Earth. This is the crown jewel of the spacecraft, so we're going to see how well it works. DART is the first major project of a NASA department called the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. The Planetary Defense Coordination Office? Is that a real place? It's a real place. And NASA's Lori Glaze leads the division that oversees planetary defense. The ones that really are kind of civilization ending size asteroids, we know we've already found 99% of those. The smaller ones that can have regional damage, there are some out there that we don't know about. So we're actually right now already building the next telescope, a space telescope called the Near Earth Object Surveyor to search the sky 24 hours a day. This past Monday, 10 months after liftoff, DART approached the target seven million miles from Earth, traveling four miles a second toward an asteroid moonlet that nobody's ever seen. And to make matters even tougher. We also don't know what it's made out of. We don't know its shape. And how do you hit something that where you don't even know its shape? Elena Adams supervised the control room. Great. It's going great. We've locked on uh, Dimorphos. We are maneuvering towards it. At 19 minutes to impact, you could see the moon Dimorphos for the first time a Go faint ahead, gray five. dot. We are precision locked and still tracking Dimorphos. Yes. 90 seconds. Oh my goodness, look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then... Four, three, two, one. And what do you know? NASA's dart hit the bullseye. In a few weeks, NASA will calculate how much that little moon moved. But we already know what happened to Elena Adams's $325 million baby. It's, it's like a Ferrari, right? It's, a, it's just a beautiful piece of equipment. And then the, the whole point of it is to go smash into a rock. <laughs> That's sad.
sad. <laughs> but also kind of glorious. <laughs>